Poland strengthens its military force along its border with the Ukraine as the UN Security Council underlined the need to prevent an escalation of war. Sweden's parliament votes to change its constitution in order to beef up its anti-terrorism laws and take it one step closer to joining NATO. G20 countries back efforts to maintain a grain export corridor from Ukraine, but face criticism for a lack of further action to tackle world hunger. Poland is strengthening its military force along its border with Ukraine in the wake of Tuesday's blast, which killed two people. Although NATO says the evidence points to the likelihood the explosion was caused by a missile from Ukraine's air defenses, Poland's response reflects the fear of Russia's war in Ukraine spreading. In their latest debate, UN Security Council members underlined the need to prevent escalation. The risks of potentially catastrophic spillover remain all too real. Yesterday's incident in Poland near the Ukrainian border was a frightening reminder of the absolute need to prevent any further escalation. There are several risks for the countries bordering Ukraine. One of stray missiles, another of a deliberate strike on a NATO member, triggering a direct conflict between the alliance and Russia, and a third, economic. People have been killed on Polish territory, which means that if there is a war in neighboring countries, even your own is not safe. During yesterday's bombing, the gas supply was interrupted from Ukraine towards Hungary. Ukraine's President Vladimir Zelensky remains convinced that the missile was not Ukrainian and is requesting immediate access to the site to establish what he says, all the details, every fact. Meanwhile, Moscow has denied targeting missiles anywhere within 35 kilometers of the Ukraine-Poland border and accuses Ukraine of trying to escalate the war. The aftermath of Tuesday's massive wave of Russian airstrikes. The attacks across Ukraine hit both critical energy infrastructure and residential areas. The local governor in Lviv province says that though power is back up for around 95 percent of the province, only 30 percent of consumers can use electricity at the same time due to capacity limits. We heard both explosions. The first explosion happened when we were in a shelter. I grabbed my children. The second explosion was very powerful. The house was shaking. I was worried it was happening in our backyard because we could hear the explosions. In the capital, Kyiv, at least one person was killed in the bombardment and electricity cut off to thousands of homes. Russia's President Vladimir Putin has been accused of trying to freeze Ukraine into submission after failing to take it by force. As winter approaches, Ukraine's military advances are slowing. The probability of a Ukrainian military victory defined as kicking the Russians out of all of Ukraine to include what they define or what they claim is Crimea, to the probability of that happening anytime soon is not high, militarily. Russia's defense ministry has published footage of its so-called kamikaze drones, which it used in Tuesday's barrage of strikes. Russia says it only targets energy or military infrastructure. With overwhelming support, Sweden's parliament has approved a new constitutional amendment that will allow it to pass stricter anti-terrorism laws, taking the nation one step closer to joining NATO and placating Turkey. The amendment passed with 278 out of the 349 votes. It will target groups that either support or participate in terrorism. This comes just a week after Sweden's prime minister visited Turkey's president in Ankara. When Sweden and Finland first applied to join the alliance, Turkey blocked their bids, accusing Stockholm of being a haven for terrorists. The new legislation could soon be used to prosecute members of the Kurdish Workers' Party, an organization blacklisted as a terrorist group by Ankara and most of its Western allies. Only the country's left party opposed the change. It will take effect on January 1st. Sweden understands. Special moment by taking a photo together.
The G20 leaders' efforts to save global economic order has been undermined by geopolitical events. They gathered in Bali, afraid that the cost of containing inflation could provoke a global recession, lethal for the system, especially after years of pandemic restrictions. The prices of food and energy are igniting poverty, especially in developing countries, where food shortages could turn into starvation. For the World Bank, food insecurity is still a main concern. When we look at the situation in Ukraine, it is terrible, not only because people are dying, but also because the economy is very seriously affected. The effect on the rest of the world is starvation, misery, we are going backwards in the fight against poverty, and the leaders have said it very clearly, we need common sense, and common sense must prevail in all cases. Russia's invasion of fellow grain exporter Ukraine pushed global prices of staples to record highs earlier this year. G20 countries have backed efforts to maintain a grain export corridor from certain Ukrainian ports on the Black Sea. But they've faced criticism for a lack of further action to tackle hunger in the world. There seems to be no light in solving the problems between the leading world countries soon and easy. Still, even without a full convergence among G20 leaders, all member states agreed the need to stop the war soon and to avoid new Cold War. Because each one of them wants to resolve as soon as possible the economic crisis and the coming global recession. From Bali, Indonesia, Nadia Gancheva. The Republicans have gained control of the U.S. House of Representatives with a slim majority on Wednesday. They formally captured the 218 House seats needed to claim majority as vote counting continued for over a week. Several close races remain undecided and will determine the final size of a Republican majority in the lower chamber of the U.S. Congress. Control of the House will give the Republican Party a veto on U.S. President Joe Biden's agenda for the next two years. The gains fall short of the red wave Republicans predicted. Cheers and warm chants greeted Brazil's president-elect at the COP27 conference in Egypt. He's seen as a champion of climate change and as a protector of the Amazon rainforest. We will talk to the UN Secretary General and ask that the 2025 COP be held in Brazil. And in Brazil, it has to be in the Amazon. Activists believe Lula's return to power will also see a resumption of the green measures he took in his previous term in office. Lula being the new president means hope. It means to be bring back Brazil to the international agenda for climate change. As custodian of the Amazon, Brazil's new leader hopes his country can make a major impact on global warming. A beautiful world from the point of view of an insect. That's the purpose of a new exhibit at the National Museum of Natural History in Paris. When visitors come, they will have to cross a meadow, a pond, and a forest. Meeting snails, butterflies, spiders, mosquitoes, and dragonflies along the way. When we enter the exhibition, we will go through a shrinking machine and we will find ourselves in an inverted scale. The grass will be three, four meters high. The insects will be bigger than us. The smallest living things that humans don't know about, that humans don't see in the grass under their very feet, are very, very important in the functioning of these ecosystems. It's all part of the fourth edition of the On the Way to Illumination Festival designed with the scientists from the museum. And it will give visitors a magnified glimpse of a mini world until January 15th.